Fabiano Caruana has been on fire in the chess world, now the second highest rated player in the world, recently even passing 2,800, although as the recording of this video is actually 2,799 point something. Anyway, in this game, we see a very valuable tool, one of the most important strategies any chess player can use, Fabiano Caruana uses in this game against Hans Niemann in the FIDE Grand Swiss. This is a, an unbelievably revealing game. If you want to become a better chess player, this game is something you want to see. And if you understand it, it's not that hard to implement it. Let's begin. Fabiano Caruana has white. Hans Niemann has black. E4 is played. E5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5. Caruana plays the Spanish or Rui Lopez opening. Knight to f6. So this is very important. Hans Niemann plays the Berlin defense. Now, traditionally, the Berlin defense is designed as a safe opening. Basically, when black wants to draw white at the highest level, they play this. Um, but we'll see how that doesn't always work in this game. Caruana plays the move d3. Uh, castling leads to the famous Berlin endgame that uh, Kromnik was able to use to defang Kasparov's e4 in their world championship match. But Caruana plays d3, and what this does, it keeps pieces on the board and at least keeps some complexity in the game. Bishop c5, d6 is another option. Uh, and then bishop takes c6. You'll notice Caruana takes the knight on c6 without being provoked by a6, but there's a very specific reason why he does that, and we'll see that. Pawn takes uh, on c6, and obviously he takes with a d-pawn to open up the uh, diagonal for his light-squared bishop. Uh, but what white is counting on is that his pressure on this e5 pawn is going to force black to retreat the bishop back to d6, and he'll get the tempo back when that happens. Uh, h3 was played. He can't take on e5 because the queen to d4 Threatening mate at f2, as well as attacking the knight, would win a piece in the game. So h3 is played to keep a, a knight or bishop out of the g4 square. Knight to d7 from Hans Niemann, trying to protect that e5 pawn, which is sort of a, the sensitive point in his position. Knight to c3, natural development from Caruana. Castles and bishop to e3, directly challenging that bishop on c5. Uh, black can take. It's a playable move. But players with the black pieces usually don't like to take on e3. It gives white easy play. The pawn at e3 covers the f4 uh, and d4 squares, and white can castle, gets play on the half-open f-file. So that usually isn't what black does. And here, Neiman plays the bishop back to d6, the standard square for the bishop in this structure, protecting e5. Castles from white, rook to e8, again protecting e5, and the bishop or knight can tuck away at the f8 square. Knight to d2. Caruana wants this knight to go to c4, a very good square for the knight. Not only does it put some pressure on the bishop at d6, maybe you can take away the bishop pair advantage for black, but it also puts some pressure on the e5 pawn. Uh, again, that's sort of a target. Knight to f8. This knight could possibly reroute to e6 and hit d4 and f4. Knight to c4, again, putting pressure on the bishop at d6 as well as that pawn. And here Hans Niemann plays the move knight to g6. An interesting and looks like a pretty good move. Not only is he overprotecting the e5 pawn, but he's sort of clamping down on the f4 square. This is a very natural pawn break for white in this structure. And Hans Niemann has uh, set up his pieces so that this is very hard for white to execute. But Caruana has another pawn break, and he plays it here, and that's d4. Uh, the pawn, the d-pawn has moved twice, but he has to play a pawn break at some point, so he plays d4 here. And now Hans Niemann plays a move that looks as natural as anything, but it actually turns out to be inaccurate. The moves, move is bishop to e6. Caruana said dur that during the game he was worried about f5, actually, where black can get some activity, but uh, this turns out, the computers show after a few moves, that uh, black has equality and uh, he would have been okay there as well. But bishop to e6 is played by Hans Niemann. Now, I want you to watch very closely because this is really uh, the sort of the lesson from this game. What Caruana does in this position is he changes the structure. Remember, Niemann played a Berlin, which is a safe defense. Watch what Caruana does here. First, he takes on d6. That gets rid of the two bishop edge that black had. After pawn takes d6, he plays this move, d5. 
gaining space in the center. And black doesn't want to ignore that and say play bishop to c8. That just leaves Caruana with a nice space advantage in the middle of the board. Uh, so he takes on d5 and then knight d5. And I want you to look very carefully at this position. We started with a Berlin. We now have a Sicilian defense, believe it or not. When Caruana analyzed this game, he didn't mention this, probably because for someone at his level, these types of structural changes are as natural as breathing, really for, for Neiman too. But this is, a, this is a Sicilian defense. Let's look at this position. Let's say at the beginning of the game, black plays c5, then knight f3, knight c6, and then e5 here, knight b5, d6. This is the first moves of the Kalashnikov Sicilian. Uh, and here we have the exact same structure, a half-open C file for black, a half-open D file for white, a backwards D6 pawn, and a weak D5 square. Well, let's look at our position. What do we have? The exact same structure, the half-open C file, the half-open D file, the weak D6 pawn, and the weak D5 square. He has literally transformed the position structurally from one of the safest opening structures to one of the sharpest really impressive stuff. So here, uh, rook to c8 is playable. Um, he probably was worried about losing this a pawn to the bishop, uh, but computers show that black could recover that piece in that case. Uh, so queen to d7 is played by Hans Niemann. Queen to d3, we see Caruana playing with the structure. Uh, the rook at f1 threatening to go to d1 and put pressure on d6. So bishop takes d5. Now, it would be a big mistake to take on d5 with a pawn. That would eliminate the weaknesses on d5 and d6 and give black a very healthy kingside pawn majority. After a move like e4 and knight to e5, black would be in very good shape. So Caruana takes on d5. Knight to e7 hits the queen, and the queen moves to d3. So we've already seen this secret of chess strategy of changing the structure once. Now we see it again. Hans Niemann does it because he knows that he can't just sit here with these weaknesses on d5 and d6. He now advances the pawn to d5 and changes the structure again. A very good move by Hans Niemann. The pawn takes, queen takes d5. We now have a new structure. This is what I call sort of the mutual pawn majority structure. You have three to two for white on the queen side and four versus three for black on the king side. Usually the main strategy is slowly but surely. Each side will want to advance their majority up the board. Rook f to d1. Here, rook e to d8. Uh, maybe black's best move was to take with the queen, and after rook takes, knight to f5. Uh, that would off, uh, maybe get rid of that bishop. In this kind of open position, the bishop is better uh, than the knight. Uh, but he could have been worried about white just going ahead and playing to d7 and getting more active rooks. Maybe that's why he did not play that line. Uh, rook e to d8. Queen to e2, the queen at d5 has to move. It's attacked by the rook, so the queen goes to a5. Now queen to g4. Aiming at black's king, also with some control over this d7 square, and the bishop is threatening to go to g5. Not only would that pin the knight, uh, but you couldn't respond with f6 because the bishop would just take it because there's a pin on the g7 pawn from the queen. So Caruana is beginning to have a lot of dangerous threats in this position. And the best move for black here is probably queen to c7, keeping this d7 square under control, putting some pressure on c2. But Hans Niemann here plays queen to a6. And shockingly, this is a big error. It looks sort of like a normal move, but it's actually a big problem. The big problem he has is twofold. One, one is uh, back rank threats to his king, and also this knight at e7 is very inconveniently placed, as we will see as we move ahead. So the first thing Caruana does, he exchanges the rooks. He wants uh, the rooks off the board. If black here were to take at d1, after queen takes d1, he's in huge trouble. White is threatening mate on d8. He can't move the queen to b6 to cover it. The bishop uh, would be threatening. So uh, if h6, queen to d8 check, and as I said, this knight is inconveniently placed. After the king moves, he would lose the knight. If instead of h6, he played knight to c6 to move the knight and control the d8 square, but then queen to d7. The threat of queen to e8 mate, and after h6, check, queen takes f7, white wins a pawn, and he's even defending the a2 pawn from a distance and would have a, a decisive position. 
He could play queen to a5 and hold the rook that way. The problem is then after rook takes, queen takes, then bishop takes a7 really is a problem. And he loses that, uh, that a7 pawn. So what Hans Niemann does instead is he moves the rook away, trying to avoid that exchange altogether. But that allows rook to d7, attacking the knight and also creating other problems along the seventh rank, putting pressure on f7, for example. Um, if he plays knight to c6 here, then a Karawana gets a really blistering attack. First bishop h6, threatening mate on g7. Obviously can't take the bishop because the pawn is pinned, so g6 would be forced. But then queen to h4, threatening to come into f6, where he'd threaten mate with queen f7 or queen g7, it would be curtains. And if knight to d4, so the queen could keep control of f6, then rook to d8 check. Rook takes, queen takes, and that's mate. Uh, the king can't go anywhere. It's basically a back rank mate with this bishop at h6 controlling those squares. So Hans Niemann plays knight to g6 instead of that. Uh, queen to f3, threatening to take on f7, quickly follow, followed by mate on g7. Here Hans Niemann plays queen takes a2. He grabs the pawn, but the real point is to defend the f7 square from afar. So he takes on a2 and defends f7, but now b3. Karawana blocks the queen's access to the f7 square, so Hans Niemann will have to find another way to defend that pawn. So he plays knight to h8. You don't want to play a passive move like this, but you have to do what you have to do. And uh, in this case, he moves the knight to uh, defend the f7 pawn. That allows queen takes b7, and he's threatening to take the rook at the moment. So obviously he's going to move the rook to e8. And now this strong idea, queen to c6, basically threatening to play rook to c7, gaining a tempo on the rook at e8, and then play rook c8 himself. And this the threats in the back rank are just too hard to deal with in that case. So black plays h6 to give his king a little bit of luft, a little bit of room to prevent those back rank tactics. But then rook to a7 is played. It's the queen. Obviously, the bishop at e3 is defending the rook. Uh, and the queen at uh, a2 is in trouble. And also the rook at e8 is being attacked. So he has to move the queen with check. Queen to b1 check. The king goes to h2. And now the rook moves away from the threat, goes to f8. And uh, Hans Niemann is holding on for dear life, trying to defend that f7 square. Queen to c4, just a really nice square for the queen. Sort of keeps everything together on the queen side while maintaining pressure on f7. Rook to d8. At the moment, the knight is sufficient for the defense of the f7 pawn. But then b4. Karawana begins to push his queen side pawns. Rook to b8, threatening that pawn, but just c3. That keeps everything tight and together on the queen side. The rook comes back to d8, trying to create some kind of trouble uh, against the white king. But now queen to a2. Karawana offers the exchange of queens because he knows the end game is easily winning for him with his queen side pawn. So Hans Niemann is not going to do that. Queen to e4. But now b5. The pawns continue to march. Here Hans Niemann plays king to h7. And the reason he does that, he wants to unpin this f7 pawn so he can generate some attacking pressure with f5, maybe f4 uh, after that. But Karawana presses on. With b6, the pawn gets closer to the queening square. Hans Niemann plays f5, continuing that idea, trying to generate some tactics. Queen to a4 from Karawana, offering the exchange of queens again. Queen to b1 not allowing that exchange and trying to keep the queen at least behind the passed pawn. And now queen to h4. Not only does he threaten the rook at d8, but he encroaches a, ever so close to black's king. The rook goes to d6 to avoid capture. But now queen to e7, threatening mate on g7 and attacking the rook on d6. Rook to g6, avoids the rook capture and also defends the g7 pawn. But then queen takes e5. And in this position, having had enough, Hans Niemann resigned. He's down two pawns. He doesn't have enough, of, enough pressure. If you were to try a move, say, like queen to f1, threatening mate on g2, all Karawana would have to do is just play g3. And he doesn't have anything. And computers show mate in, you know, 15, 16 or something. Uh, for white here, the game is over. Hans Niemann resigned. A real powerful lesson from Karawana. We started with a safe opening. But he changed the structure and created a very sharp opening. And this idea of changing structure, a very powerful tool. In fact, I have some links in the description below uh, for some books that are on Amazon that 
uh, really strong books about chess structure you can check out if you'd like. Thank you for joining us at Chess Dog. See you again soon.